So, are you tired of editing in that tiny little box that is the script editor in Contact? Yeah, me too. It is tiny and you know, there are some other windows in Contact that pop out to a larger screen, but for some reason the Contact script editor is not one of them, at least in Contact 6 and before. Never fear though, because there are some excellent script editors that are third party that you can edit in and then copy your script over. And I wanna show you a couple of those great ones today. Hey, my name is Steve, composer, engineer, and lecturer, and welcome to the channel. A really quick episode for you today because all I wanna show you is how I edit my scripts in some third-party editors. It's actually really straightforward. I'm gonna make two simple recommendations for you to investigate. And all of this is just because Contact has this tiny little script editor and the space is it's, it's horrible to work in, particularly on really large scripts or complicated scripts. It's missing things like numbering the rows, for example, so you don't exactly know which row is what row. And when it says there's an error on line 31, one, you're like, well, what's line 31? I'm not going to sit there and count them, particularly when I get to line 650. But also you've got a bigger workspace. You can take advantage of a big monitor if you have one. You can take advantage of just a small monitor if you have one, because the contact one, it really is ridiculously small. So without gas bagging about it too much, let's dive in and take a look at a couple of options. So first of all, if you're unsure what I mean, I'm talking about this script editor. In here, I've got a script that I've just copied and pasted in. I did a video recently announcing a free little script for you to be able to use on any of your instruments if you want to. A script that can automatically develop a UI that's ready for your instrument as a basic starting block for your first contact instrument. So check that video linked above and below if you're interested in that script. It's completely free and you can download it from the website below as well. In this script, as I scroll through, basically it has a huge amount of script that creates this knob section. Um, and then you can just update a few little controls here to make some adjustments to what appears on the screen and how it's labeled and how you know it's controlling certain parameters, whether it's a low or high pass, for example, what type of delay you choose. All that stuff can be adjusted within these few controls, which is really awesome. But you can see that working in this little tiny space is actually quite a bit of a challenge. Um, I've zoomed in my computer screen here so that you can see it, but if I just zoom out, see what I mean? It's <laughs> honestly just, ridiculously small and I can't extend this any further like this this is it I can maybe you know shrink it a little bit but what good said that literally that is as far as I can go so I'm in need of some real estate for my scripting now the problem is that KSP or contact scripting is a pretty specific language and there's not that many coders out there that can really do it in fact there's only really one and it's sort of an unofficial one but essentially if you've got anywhere that can edit text that's that's ultimately what we're doing when we're creating a script something as simple as text edit or notepad plus plus can definitely give you something that you can just script easily in there and then copy it over and see if it works. The first program I want to show you though is called Brackets. That's one that I quite like. Brackets is a very simple program. Over here I've got some working files so I can have multiple files open, different scripts open at the side. So if I'm working in two or three instruments but I want to copy and paste some script between them, I can. And it gives us straight away the benefit of these numbers. So I can see that line 33 is still part of my readme section, whereas line 159 starts talking about the delay control constants. That numbering is honestly a lifesaver when you start talking about debugging your code. Or if you just want to reference your code to someone you're working with. If you're working with someone else and you say, look, I want you to have a look at line 277 because I'm not too sure about this particular control. That is easy to do when you have a script editor that can actually read out the numbers of the lines. Now this is just saved as a simple text file or .txt file. And it really isn't doing much. It's not highlighting anything. It's not telling me if there's any errors. It won't be able to tell me if there's any errors. All it can do is type out text, which is what I've done. What I can then do is highlight the whole thing, copy it, and paste it into my library. So I could come in here, highlight the whole lot, paste, hit apply, and my script would do, which is of course what I did in order to get this script in here in the first place. So simple text editors, something like brackets is a good way to get started with an external editor. It allows you to increase the text size or decrease the text size for a start. That's magic. At least magic when you're coming from the script editor in contact. Like check it out, I can just zoom in. Oh, I, honestly, that is just <laughs> one reason to use this in, in, in the first place. 
Now the other type of editor is called Sublime Text. It isn't a free editor, it is something you have to pay for, but you can download a free trial. And that trial actually gives you kind of unlimited access. And it's basically under the assumption that once you've really kind of tried and tested it out and you start using this a lot, you'll eventually buy it. It's something that I've just started using myself. So I'm still kind of, you know, trying it out. I was using brackets for a long time, but there is a benefit for Sublime Text. First of all, I love the UI interface. It puts all my scripts across the top. So I've got basically different tabs. It's just like a browser. And then I can scroll through and I can see my text. And if I want to close a block, like let's say, let's close this on init block, just collapse the whole thing. And now I'm just looking at my UI controls. I can unpack that. I could close just certain sections. Let's take a look here, this group level controls. Let's just close that. Let's close the ADSR controls. Really, really cool. If I want to skim through my text really quickly, I can come over to the right here and see like a sort of pictorial overview of all of my text and scroll through that really easily as well. So honestly, a fantastic sort of UI interface. The other thing you'll be noticing though, is that I've got colored text and certain things that look like they've been highlighted as commands or functions and stuff. That is actually through a little bit of third party unauthorized KSP help, I suppose you could say. At least that's what I think it is anyway. Basically this guy has a free scripting tool that you can use as a plugin for Sublime Text. So you download Sublime Text, then you download this little plugin and that starts reading the KSP code and starts highlighting it, marking it up and giving you useful little features which is really, really awesome and fantastic. And there is a way to donate uh, if you'd like to support him as well, because it is honestly fantastic that he has done this. And it is, there's some really, really cool features that you can get because of this. So if we take a look at the bottom right, for example, we can now see it's in the language of KSP. If I click this, I've got lots of options. And of course I've got all the usual standard ones, but now I have KSP as well. There it is there and I've had that selected. So that's enabled Sublime to basically analyze this text and recognize it as a KSP language. And it started to try and grab commands, for example. So if I go down to the bottom and I wanted to do another on UI control on the end of this script, let's take a look. So I'll just give myself some space down here. I'm gonna go with on UI underscore control, and I might be controlling a variable called volume. As soon as I hit enter here, it adds the end on another little fantastic feature that you see in lots of other different languages in script editors. And it's fantastic to have this plugin working uh, this way as well. Let's give myself a bit more space again. And let's do this something along the lines of a message function. So I'm going to type in message and you can see that it brings up these little helpful commands. And if I click on that, it shows me what the rest of the function would be. So we know that the function could be something like a string of text there. Looking at another option here, if I did something like set underscore knob, and there we can see a label, we got unit, we got offset, we got all different things that we could try. Let's try this one. I'm gonna select that one. And you can see that it's opened up parameters and show me what parameters it's expecting. So let's pop in our parameter there, which will be our volume. And let's pop in what text we want. Simple. Now it's not 100% perfect. For example, one of the most common things to use is set underscore engine underscore par, and you actually can't see one in there. It doesn't come up with anything, which is really, really odd. But as I'm typing it in, you can see this one called underscore set underscore engine underscore par. I don't know why the underscore is there at the beginning, but that is actually the one. As soon as I enter it in there, it's perfect. Parameter, value, group, slot, generic. It's got all the parameters ready to go. So I usually add that in and then I just go ahead and remove that one. Um, so it's not perfect, but there is certainly very, very helpful and very, very useful. Very fast at writing all this code as well. So again, once you're done writing the code, you just copy all of that, pop it into contact and see if it works. It is a little bit to wrap your head around this idea that you have to create the text in one area in this script editor and then copy it across. And if you want to make a change, you have to go back to that original script editor, make that change and then copy it across again and reapply it. Once you wrap your head around that sort of two working spaces mentality though, it becomes really seamless and really fast to use. And honestly, when working on larger scripts, it 
kind of becomes essential. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of how you could use some of these editors and why you might want to use that. Chances are if you've arrived at this video you're probably feeling the pinch already so this is a great solution for those larger scripts that you're working on. If you're keen to learn more about contact this channel is a full-on resource for it and I'm sure I'll be releasing a lot more videos on contact scripting, contact building and everything in between. So subscribe on your way out but otherwise I will catch you in the next one.